Okay, 10.6, secant and tangent. So we looked at tangents in the previous lesson. Remember, a tangent is a segment that is touches the circle at only one point from the outside. A chord is a segment that's on the inside. And then a secant is a <clears throat> segment that comes from the outside but goes into the circle. So this would be a secant. It comes from the outside, actually goes into the circle. This is a chord. Remember, it's not a diameter because it doesn't go through the center, okay? And then a tangent, again, is one that just touches the circle on the outside at one point. So we have some different relationships here. Uh, some of these are real easy, and actually we've already looked at some of these in uh, your practice test. But this first one, it wants to find this angle measure. Now remember, we said an inscribed angle is equal to half the angle on the arc. But in this case, that is not an inscribed angle. The vertex is inside the circle. But it's not a central angle because the vertex is not at the center. So how do you do this one? All you do is you take the two angles that are formed by the chord. So you're going from here to here. And then you use the vertical angle. Remember, vertical angles are equal. So you take the arc there. So you're taking those two arcs, 55 and 195, you add them, then you divide by 2. So if I do that, 55 plus 195, and then divide by 2, I get 125. So that would be the measure of that angle. Okay, let's take a look at the second problem. Okay, here are two secants. Okay, so in a secant, <clears throat> the relationships are slightly different. So this angle right here, instead of adding the two angles, you subtract and divide by 2. So you do 155 minus 83 and then divide by 2. So and that gives me 36. Okay, so a little different relationship. If it's on the inside, you add. If it's on the outside, you subtract. Okay, remember that. Inside, you add. Outside, you subtract, okay? So make sure you remember the difference there. <clears throat> okay, let's keep going. Where is this one? This one's on the outside. Now, the problem is, here's our angle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do 159 minus x. This is my x. Divided by 2, then that equals 41. Sorry, I don't know why it keeps jumping around. Okay, 41. Okay, so to solve this equation, pay real close attention. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So that's going to get rid of those 2s. It's going to leave 159 minus x equals 82. Then I'm going to subtract 159 from both sides. It's going to leave negative x, so 2 minus 159, it's negative 77, so then that means x would be 77. You can't have a negative angle, so x is 77. Now, one thing to note, I know my answer makes sense because the angle that's in the middle here has to be in the middle of these two numbers. Let me say it again. The angle that's in the middle has to be in the middle of those two numbers. And 77 here is between 159 and 41. Okay, where is this angle? Well, this angle, the vertex, is on the circle. So remember, this is an inscribed angle. So the angle is half the arc, or we said the arc is two times the angle. Well, in this case, I'm looking for the arc from here to here. So I'm going to use this second equation. So x is going to be 2 times 93. So x is 186. OK. Number 5. OK, this one's very similar to problem number 1. In number 1, we were finding the angle on the inside. This time, we know the angle. OK, so here, what we're going to do Here's our x, so this one's going to be 70 
plus x, remember on the outside you add, divided by 2 equals the angle, which is 115. So just like the earlier problem, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. So it's 70 plus x equals, that's 230, subtract 70, and we get x is 160. Okay, what about problem number six? <clears throat> Same type of situation, the only difference is here we're having to solve an equation. So remember, here's our angle, here's our arc. The arc is equal to two times the angle. Going back to like the problem right up here in number four. The arc is equal to two times the angle. So don't forget these relationships. Some of them are repeated, so it's good that we're repeating them. Hopefully you'll remember them. So I get 3 plus 65 x equals, I do 2 times 99, and that gives me 198. Subtract 3. 65 x equals 195. Divide by 65. And then that gives me x is 3. <clears throat> okay, problem number 7. Okay, remember the relationship. The angle is outside, so the angle is subtraction. So here it is 17x minus 2 minus 56 divided by 2 equals 56 the angle on the outside, okay? So, just like in the others, we're going to multiply by 2. So it's going to give me 17x minus 2 minus 56 equals 112. I'm going to combine those, so that's 17x minus 58 is 112. Add 58. So that's 17x, oops, that 12 didn't come out very good, so 112 plus 58 is 170. Then I divide by 17, so that gives me x is 10. Now a good idea is always go back and plug in and make sure it works out. <clears throat> Next page, find the measure of the arc or angle indicated. So we're going to set up our equations the same way. The only difference is now I've got to go back and plug in. Okay, so let's take the first one. This one's on the inside. When you, you're inside, you add. Okay, so it's 53x minus 1 plus the 199x plus 1. Those are the two on the outside. Add, divide by 2, and that equals my angle, 127x minus 1. Now, this can get kind of ugly, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine my x's on top. So if I do that, 53 plus 199 is 252x, so I have 252x, then negative 1 and positive 1, those are going to cancel over 2 equals 127x minus 1. Then I'm going to divide 252 by 2, that's 126x equals 127x minus 1. Get my x's on the same side. So that's negative 1x equals negative 1. Divide by negative 1. And I get x is 1. Okay, now what? Now it says find the measure of angle RQS, this angle right here. So i got to take 1 and plug it back into that. So 127 times 1 minus 1, and that's going to give me 126. All right, one more. Find arc SU. So this one's on the outside. Remember, on the outside, you subtract. So you take this minus this to equal that. So 170 minus, okay, here you got to be careful. You want to put 
5x minus 8 in parentheses because you're subtracting all that. Divide by 2 equals 5x minus 1. So the reason you have to do parentheses is because that's going to make the 8 here positive. Think of it as distributive. The 5x becomes negative, and then the 8 becomes positive when you distribute there. Divide by 2 equals 5x. Okay, combine the 170 and the 8, and that's 178, so you get negative 5x plus 178, all divided by 2, equals 5x. Now, 2 will not go into 5 evenly, so I'm going to multiply by 2 to get rid of this 2 here. That's going to give me negative 5x plus 178 equals 10x. Add 5x here, add 5x here. So I have 178 equals 15x. And I made one little mistake here. I need to go back. I forgot my minus 1. My 1 didn't show up here. So minus 1. So minus 1 here times 2. My fault. So then that's 10x minus 2. And then add the 5x. So I have minus 2. Okay, now I need to add 2. Sorry about that. Just didn't show up there in the problem. So I have 180 equals 15x. Now I'm going to divide by 15. So 180 divided by 15 is 12. Okay, now let's go back. Find ArcSU. Where is ArcSU? That is right here, which is that expression. So I need to take 12 and plug it back in here. So I'm going to scroll up here. So that's, sorry, that's going to be 5 times 12 minus 8. So that's 60 minus 8, which is, I think that's 52, yes, 52 degrees. All right, so quite a bit here, a lot of algebra. Got to work equations out, but not too bad.